everybody and welcome! This is Kerbal Space Program Update 1.10 called Shared Horizons. It does offer a few new things, a few improved things and it will come out on July 1st, less than a week after release of this video. The main news is that after collaborating with NASA a few years ago, KSP is finally officially working together with the European Space Agency ESA. This means a few things for this update, but there is also more in addition to that. Keep in mind, everything you will see in this video is part of a preview build of the upcoming update, so your mileage upon release might vary, likely to the better. So without any further ado, let's dive into it. The 10 best new things in Kerbal Space Program 1.10. New parts and variants. This is probably the first one you will notice. Right when you open up the vehicle editor, you will see new command modules. A MOHO transfer module, MTM, and a MOHO planetary observer, MPO. Those two are modeled after the Bepi Colombo mission, a cooperation between NASA and the Japanese space agency JAXA that is currently on its way to Mercury. It was launched in 2018 and is scheduled to reach orbit around Mercury in December 2025. Anyways, new parts! We get a new magnetometer that extends with a really long boom. In reality, these booms are rather delicate, but this being Kerbal Space Program, you can use them as an elevator replacement. Or maybe other things? I'm looking forward to what you guys are going to do with them besides gather new science, of course. Another welcome addition is the new Mini Claw, officially called Advanced Grabbing Unit Junior. It comes in two colors, the traditional white and a new black variant. This new black paint coat is also available for the old claw, by the way. Those are all the new parts, but we also get quite a few new variants and some revamps. There are new ESA variants for the 2.5 meter fuel tanks, which were used to build the new stock Arian 5 replica. The Kickback solid rocket boosters now also have an ESA paint job with all the agency's partner countries' flags. If you want to nitpick, the real Arian 5 boosters are a bit thicker compared to the main tanks here in the game. In addition to those parts, we get new variants for fairings. Silver and gold. While the silver variant also turns the fairing itself into a metallic texture, the gold variant appears to just change the fairing base to one with a golden ring. There's a whole bunch of improvements around fairings, but those have their own item in this video. New variants are also available for the fuel lines, which are now available in a subtle whitish-gray color. And struts can now be white instead of just gray. Something that completely changes how the part looks is the new variant for the poodle engine. In the olden days of KSP, it only had one small stubby nozzle. Then it got two larger ones with the previous update. Now there is a new variant available that reduces it to one nozzle, but it is a rather large one, fitting for a vacuum engine. This variant is also used on the Arian 5 replica, by the way. New variants are now also available for all decouplers and separators, adding a yellow one or rather golden one, depending on how you want to look at it. Speaking of golden, the golden fuel tanks got a texture revamp. They are now a lot prettier and they are now also available in a silver variant. Something that appears also silver, but in the sky, is the next item I want to talk about. Comets! Yes, we now have comets in the game! This is really exciting, because for me, comets are among the most fascinating things in space. In KSP 1.10, they are either part of the solar system, and you will have a better chance discovering them using the Sentinel telescopes, or they are interstellar objects entering the system on a hyperbolic trajectory. Those will not pop up that often, so make sure you have a mission at the ready when it happens. Here's a thought. If KSP can model interstellar objects, could the upcoming Kerbal Space Program 2 pick up the ball and show us their origin in another solar system? Maybe we could use comets to piggyback to those systems. Okay, might take a few thousand years longer than with super advanced rocketry, but still, would be intriguing. 
Also, comets can break up into smaller chunks when passing through an atmosphere, according to the release notes. That sounds exciting, but I was not able to encounter such a thing nor change a comet's course into an atmosphere. I mean, look at its mass, that's a challenge to move. If you're wondering, but this thing does not have a tail, then the answer is not yet. You see, comets are mainly dirty ice balls, or rather icy dirt balls, as the Rosetta mission has discovered. When comets get closer to the sun, the ice gets sublimated into water vapor, skipping the liquid state completely and creating a beautiful coma and tail we can see in the night sky. There is also a stream of plasma represented by this blue shimmer. One thing that has taken me aback at first when I watched my first comet in KSP was the fact that the tail was not behind the comet like a wake of a boat or airplane, but more like pointing away from the sun. This of course is in line with real world physics because the solar wind blasts the tail away from the sun. Real comets are only a few kilometers in diameter, but can have a coma of tens of thousands kilometers and a tail more than one million kilometers long. So if you get close enough to see a comet's nucleus in KSP, you are basically already in its vapor cloud. Now, if you are lucky enough to get a Kerbal close to the comet, you can take a surface sample, yielding delicious amounts of science. And getting close to a comet leads me to my next item. ESA missions for everybody. The partnership between KSP and ESA has not only resulted in a few new parts and variants, there are also three new missions. Bepi Colombo, Bepi Colombo the short version and Rosetta. Rosetta, as you may know, was a mission by ESA that sent a spacecraft to the comet 67P Churyumov-Gerasimenko. Not only that, it also managed to put a tiny lander onto its surface called Philae. I was fortunate enough to play this mission together with ESA scientist Charlotte Götz, who also taught us a lot about comets and other fascinating stuff in a separate video I'll link in the description and in the iCard on top. Custom missions are usually only available for players that have also purchased the Making History expansion. The ESA missions are available for everybody. You do get a few perks if you have the expansion though, since it enables you to change some things in the mission builder to adapt it more to your liking. This is starting to look very good so far, which is also the cue for the next item on this list. Jewel and Lathe got prettier. Since a few updates ago, the developers are continuously revamping the textures of planets and moons. With this update, we get new visuals for the gas giant Jewel and one of its five moons, Lathe. But I have to admit that the Lathe textures don't tickle my fancy that much compared to how gorgeous Jewel looks now. We have layers of clouds, we have currents and storms all moving about. Wonderful! With the new update, this green giant really is the jewel of the solar system. And it is still my favorite destination in KSP, with all its moons to discover. Too bad you can't plant a flag on it. But speaking of flags... Flags everywhere. This is a fun one. Kerbal Space Program 1.10 enables us to put flags on any surface, even on fairings. There is the regular small flat flag, but there are also curved flags designed to fit on fuel tanks, but also on any other curved parts such as fairings. While a fun thing and a cool way to make your vehicle really your own, I would have also liked for the flags to be not just curved in such a way that they fit in one orientation along the length of the part, but also across. It does look better with the transparent flag design and when you use a smaller diameter flag on a larger tank though. But we can now make rovers that almost look like rally cars. Or NASCAR race cars? Which ones have more sponsor tags on them? I really don't know. I don't know much about racing, but there is another thing I know about that's better in KSP 1.10. Fairings. I once mentioned that I posted a longish diatribe about fairings a while back. It seems somebody from the dev team read it, because many of my complaints were addressed in this update. I am flattered, I guess? Anyway, let's get to the good stuff. We already talked about the new fairing color variants. In addition to that, fairings observe the angle snap setting. If it is active, fairings will behave as before. If not, the angles of your fairings can be made a lot more smoothly. This should make for very nice fairings in upcoming vehicles. Also, you can just leave your fairing open-ended by holding down the modifier key Alt on Windows before clicking left. 
Why would you want to do that? Well, it could be used similar to the trunk of a SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft. Things put in there would be shielded from drag, as shown here with the aerodynamic overlay enabled. You can get that by pressing F12 during flight, by the way. Now, I mentioned earlier that you can put flags on fairing. That's impossible to do if the fairing always opens up when hovering over it with your mouse, right? No, because you can either once again hold the modifier key and place the flag, or you deactivate the mouse over expansion view for a specific fairing altogether. Now this is something I was missing and I'm probably going to be using a lot in the future. One main gripe of mine with previous KSP versions was that this fairing expansion was causing performance drops. There is something in the release notes that makes me believe this was improved. And I quote, Optimized fairing mesh construction and exploded view heuristic by caching mouse position. We'll have to see how this pans out when I'll be doing one of my over-engineered monstrosities, but so far the fairing improvements are a big plus for me. Gotta give this the green light, speaking of which, colorful kerbals. A previous version of KSP, I believe it was 1.4, added the ability to choose a different suit for your Kerbal with the coat hanger icon. Now this icon opens up a preview window where you can not only select between three suits, the regular one, the one introduced with Making History and the one from Breaking Ground, but also offers up multiple variants of those suits. You can also check how your Kerbal will look like with the helmet off. If you want to create your own special custom suit, you will be able to do that. There should be a guide for that available on release. And you can set a custom suit light color for the futuristic EVA suit. Aside from enabling you to line up your kerbals like a rainbow, this could be useful to immediately identify your crew. For instance, pilots could be blue, scientists green and engineers yellow. Just a thought. The game remembers which colors you chose for which kerbal, so it will stay the same the next time you send them on a mission. Which is nice. Just like the next item, quality of life improvements. Every new KSP iteration improves gameplay a little bit. This time around, the team focused on the right-click menus to improve them. For instance, if you right-click on a crew module and select Transfer Crew, you can now also send any crew member inside this module on an EVA. This was already possible with left-clicking on the crew hatch to make a Kerbal exit on that specific hatch. But sometimes these hatches are obscured or hard to click on, so this is a welcome improvement. The release notes also mention other improvements to the right-click menus, for instance changing the position where they pop up to not obscure the center of the view while playing. These are probably things that you will not notice immediately, but that add over time delivering a more pleasant experience. As is the next thing I want to talk about. Performance improvements. What makes for a pleasant experience? Smooth gameplay. Well, a lot of what you can find in the README file that outlines what has changed since the previous version has to do with performance improvements. I already mentioned the fairings, but there is a lot more in there, for instance, regarding loading vessels in the editor and other stuff. Of course, the limited amount of time I had with the preview build of KSP 1.10 was not enough to make a definitive judgment how much faster or stable the game runs now. But I did not run into any hiccups or problems while playing around with it, at least not any major ones. Which also could be due to the next item. 131 bug fixes. Yep, the developers were busy. They squashed more than 130 bugs across the main game and the two expansions, including localization issues. To be honest, I just parsed the changelog and searched for fix, which resulted in the number 131, so maybe that number is not 100% exact, but it appears to me that this is the highest number of fixes a new version of Kerbal Space Program has introduced at least for a very long time. And this concludes my list of the 10 best new things in Kerbal Space Program 1.10 Shared Horizons. What do you think? Are you looking forward to trying it out yourself? Me, I'm looking forward to experimenting with comets and see what I can come up with. Also, the fairing improvements are something I am very happy with. And this will bridge over the time until Kerbal Space Program 2 is going to be released next year. This is the thing though. 
The original KSP gets improved every few months and improved in a good way, I might add. This will make it harder for Kerbal Space Program 2, because fans will go into that with even higher expectations the more satisfaction they can get out of the first game. I already mentioned comets being interstellar objects and potentially crossing more than one solar system as something that KSP2 could incorporate. I hope there is constant exchange between both development teams so the improvements we get in KSP1 will also translate to the new game. But for now, let's enjoy the new Shared Horizons update when it comes out on July 1st. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.